Good morning, Michael. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I came across a CNN article about ransomware, and I became very interested in the subject and the idea. And uh, I talked to Todd, our boss, and he put me in contact with you. Um, so just for our viewers and everyone listening, um, what do you do? Sure, I'm Michael Goldstein. I'm president of Lion Infotech. We're an IT services company. We've uh, been in the business for 10 years, uh, right here locally in Fort Lauderdale. Have uh, 20 employees, and about 60% uh, of our business is working with law firms, and the rest are not for profits. Um, over the past probably four years, security has been one of the highest, uh, highest priorities for us. And over the past few years, ransomware has just been killing our clients. <laughs> as well as our prospects. So for those who don't know, what is ransomware? So ransomware is that one day you're sitting on your computer, you decide to open up a Word file that you probably opened up every single day the day before. And all of a sudden you can't find it. Mm -hmm. um, you look at it and maybe it was renamed. It, it, it has some weird numbers. Or the other option is, is that you open it up and a, something pops up on your screen and tells you that this file's been encrypted. The pop-up will come up and say, you've been held ransom. We need you to pay this much money in electronic currency, Bitcoin type currency, mm -hmm. for you to be able to get your data back. And it could be one file, it could be your whole hard drive. If you're on a corporate network, it could be your whole network. It's very difficult to go out there and prevent. You have to go out there and uh, go out, I'll say won't prevent really to remedy mm -hmm. because I don't know if everyone knows how to procure Bitcoin. Right. You know, it could be as small as $500, it could be $50,000. And there's a time limit on it. Mm -hmm. So the first two hours, if you pay, let's just assume it's a $500 and you decide not to, it can go up to $5,000. A week later, it could be $10,000. So um, the bad guys are untraceable. Yeah. And you really only have two choices. You have to A, hope that you have a good backup or B, decide that if you want to go out and get your files back to pay that ransom. So would you say that the public sector is in danger of ransomware? Because the article mainly pointed towards governmental institutions. And I'm just curious for our uh, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, whether they should be cautious about this. Small and medium businesses are huge targets. Mm -hmm. The reason why the CNN article and things like that talk about big businesses is because those make the biggest headlines. Right. You know, you look at the city of Baltimore still suffering through it, the city of Atlanta, I think it was four weeks ago, Cleveland Airport. Mm -hmm. So we, you only hear about the big ones. Um, little firms and in regulated industries, somewhat that could be a breach, it could be a security issue that goes out there and you might not hear about them. Um, we have you know, one user coming up and calling us. We have large companies that go out there. It kind of shows you that we're all vulnerable. Mm. And you know, it is an epidemic. It really is. And you know, we preach the ability to go back and follow a certain set of things. I think that anyone that goes to a doctor has their regiment of things that they have to do every day, maybe take some supplements. Um, a lot of the things that we talk about, we, we, we talk about, we've been talking about the same thing for 10, 15 years. You know, having a good antivirus on the computer. That doesn't make a difference if you're working at home or you're a large business. Um, if you're on the Microsoft platform, making sure that you have current patches. Mm -hmm. um, we're going through a change today. Um, the end of January 2020, when Microsoft is uh, not supporting Windows 7 anymore. Mm -hmm. Every couple weeks, Microsoft releases updates to their operating system. These are patches, and these are actually a blueprint for the bad guys to get into your computer networks. So when Microsoft stops supporting it. Yeah. So we kind of view this as we do these public service announcements all the time. We want our, uh, our customers, our clients, our friends and family to understand that, hey, you're one click away from disaster. How does it work? How does ransomware get into certain systems? Is it through going to malicious websites by accident? Is it just random? It, it's all of the above, but what we've seen in 2019 is the biggest, uh, the biggest transmission of ransomware is phishing. Mm. Getting that email from bank A that you never did business with mm -hmm. and you're thinking it's important. You click on something, you open it up. It might not happen immediately. It could happen a day, a month, a week later. Um, we always say that you really do have to read before you click. Right. Um, 
If you get uh, most of the time in businesses, we don't see a lot of Word files being sent out there. You know, so if you get a file that's a Word, Excel, PowerPoint file, and the next thing you do is click on it and it asks for your username and password, think twice. Okay. You uh, get a PDF in an email and you click on it, it wants your username and password, think twice. Um, little things like looking at the address. You could take your mouse and hover over the address. You know, it might look like it's coming from, you know, M. Goldstein at LandInfotech.com, yeah. but in reality it just says my name and it's some weird, you know, Gmail address. Mm -hmm. It's a clear sign that that's a fish that might or might not be ransomware. So the, the, uh, I think uh, P.T. Barnum said there was a sucker born every minute, and I think in every generation we kind of have that, and phishing is that it goes across that line. So read, hover over. Um, there's nothing wrong with you know, calling the number, making sure. Some of these phish emails look identical to the banks, the credit card companies that are there. Lots of times they're misspelled. So when you read the English, I don't think that one of the big banks is going to misspell something that's right. there. So I think a lot of it is us, uh, us as the consumer being aware that this could be something bad. So you, we, you mentioned about uh, antivirus protection. So let's say I have antivirus protection, I have my firewall, I have a VPN. Um, is that enough to protect me from <laughs> ransomware? So the way antivirus works today is that something happens in the world it might be in the United States, it might be in China, or it could be in Russia. When the antivirus companies detect that this is something that's new, they'll go out there and fix it, like, a, like your flu shot. You know, you take the flu shot in, in, in the fall, yeah. the flu, you find out in December that it only protects 30%. <laughs> so what happens is, is antivirus needs to be updated. Yeah. So the problem is, is that you're only as good as the last update of your antivirus. Right. So again, it's, it's more precautions you need to just be aware. So you need to have a good antivirus. You have to have a paid antivirus because free never does anyone any good. Okay. In your time of need, you have no one to call. Yeah. I think that you also have to go out there and make sure that the browser looks good, the URL you're going to. Again, we have to you know, look around, look behind you on those things. And I think one of the most important things to do is to back up your data. We get more and more calls of people that had an issue and thought that they were getting a backup, but they didn't have a backup. And occasionally test it. Not everybody has to be a full IT guy. There's yeah. a lot of consumer and business products that are out there. And it's as simple as, let me move this picture from one spot to another, and then see if my backup picked it up last right. night, and then restore it. Mm -hmm. Because if you decide that, uh, if you get hit with a ransom, and you decide that you're not gonna pay it, we don't condone anybody to pay it. It's a terrible feeling. You wanna make sure that you have a good backup. Right because really your answer is to start over and restore. Mm -hmm. So it's important to protect yourself, protect your data. Also, you know, depending on if you're a mobile user, where you connect to Wi-Fi, you really all have to look over your shoulder and make sure that you know who, what, where, when. Right. Am I, is this really, you know, San Francisco airport's free Wi-Fi? You know, uh, I just use that as, a, as an example. So I think it's important that we, it's, it's a whole program, just like your doctor would say, you know, eat good, exercise, you know, right. follow these plans. Wow. So even, even airports, you could get uh, targeted. In our company, we use a new higher end, it's, it's an artificial intelligence type security software. I will tell you that uh, last year I was flying to Las Vegas on a Sunday morning. I was in the American Express Club inside of um, Miami Airport. And the way the product that we use works is that if it doesn't like something, it terminates your network connection. Oh. So here I am as the business owner at 7.30 in the morning, have a cup of coffee, connect it up to Wi-Fi, and lo and behold, it didn't like what, what the club was pushing down and terminated my connection. So in reality, what we're starting to do is put a little higher level piece of software out there. And yes, we get some false positives, mm -hmm. but you're better off having a couple of false positives right. than having this ransom spread out. Yeah. So public Wi-Fi could definitely spread that. A bad guy could be putting things on your, on your computer without you knowing. You could have typed the wrong website that's there. I mean, the classic thing that we talk about is that if you go to whitehouse.com versus whitehouse.gov, you, you might be shocked depending on 
who you are. That domain name isn't something yeah. that I probably would want my kids to see. Mm -hmm. So it could be an accident. Mm -hmm. So I think that those ways get out there. But the number one thing is that when that email comes in, I don't think that we all, any of us have a cousin in Nigeria that's guaranteed to give us $2 million. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I think it's important that we have to read, we have to look at it. And what we also see is that someone in the company sees this and wants to alert everybody, they take that whole email with the virus and forward it to everyone and said, do not click on this. <laughs> Report it to your IT. And if you think that you have an issue, whether it's your home or your business, you really have to seek out a security professional. You know, whether it's going to one of the retail stores or whether you have an IT guy, the longer you let it sit, the more it could proliferate and it could affect other computers even in your home. Is there anything on the market that I, a bit small business could buy to protect their software or like you said going to a professional is that the only so what we recommend is a lot of it is I, I used to keep this picture of this medieval castle and the medieval castle when I looked it up was from you know somewhere in the seventh the seventh century and big castle five walls around it and you know when I started you know, uh, searching the internet for this, I kept thinking, oh my God, you know, these walls at one point used to be 15 feet high. What on earth would make someone build these walls? And, you know, it dawned on me that people need layers of protection. So that's what we kind of view. Antivirus is your first stop. Uh, lots of times in our offices, uh, you know, Game of Thrones just ended. We say thank God for that because on that Monday, we do find that our internet usage goes heavily up in a lot of our customers. Right. And we use that as an example of people using things that are non-business in, in their world. So we help them build policies to go out there and say, well, does everybody need access to some of the social media sites that are out there? So we start limiting what people should or shouldn't be doing as a business. Mm -hmm. Firewall, you mentioned, is important to go out there. You know, web filter, antivirus. Uh, we also heavily uh, push out to our customers training. We want security awareness training for all of our clients. It's a, it's a new requirement for anyone that takes on a, a maintenance contract with us. We offer it at no charge. It's no more than 60 minutes. It's online. It's gamified. You don't have to sit for 60 minutes to go out there. But I think everyone should be aware of you know, what could happen, just like the questions you're asking. So if someone's a, a, a real business, something that's a, a dot .com, not, not a gmail.com, but a real uh, company.com, we offer that at no charge for a lot of cities, and our, our, our customers are thanking us. Once every 10 days, um, a quick email comes out that's fully branded from Land Infotech that's there, and they're quick 15-second videos, like don't put that USB stick in. Um, we had a, a little video piece that came out, college child coming home from school, you know, just little things. Did you change that password? Do you know what this means? And we actually put up a YouTube channel of all these little snippets so that they're just quick awareness because I don't think everybody knows yeah. what to do. So we kind of go back to the basics. I think the basics keep you good. Patch, antivirus, firewall, go out there and secure your password and know what Wi-Fi you're connecting to. Yeah. It's real important. What do I do if I believe my system has been affected by ransomware? You disconnect from wireless, you unplug that wire that's in place there, and you seek out a security professional. <laughs> I, I, I have to say, because there's no easy way to go out there. Mm -hmm. And then hope that you had a good backup. Yeah. Um, you know, backup's one of the most important things. And then usually we say if you have another laptop or you have another device, check that the backup happened last night mm -hmm. because there's really no cure. What we find is that sometimes the ransom comes up and has a name. You could Google and try to find an unencryptor. Um, but the problem is, is that you never fully get your files back. Um, I've been shooting digital pictures since 1994. I probably have like close to 80,000 pictures that I've taken, my kids, my family, all that, I have four backups of that data. So I tell this to my clients because if your data, depending on what business you're in, is that important to you, you should have multiple backups and you should test it. Um, prior to hurricane season, you know, prior to June 1st, we heavily emphasize to our customers to do a little fire drill. Yes, we're protecting your data, but we want to make sure that you see what you're paying for right. and go through that little fire drill, whether it's restoring some data, showing them that the data is there, and then trying to get them to take that experience back to their personal data. So whether you're using you know, 
Google or Office 365 or, or, or Amazon Drive or Google Drive. You know, on your personal data, make sure that everything's there. Everything's there. Um, I'm a big uh, traveler. I, I have a couple laptops. Um, my data is all encrypted up in the cloud, meaning that you know my backups happen. So if my laptop happened to fail, I'll log in on another laptop, and then I'll have my services sync the data down. So I want to make sure that my data is backed up. Everyone should feel the same way, like I feel about my pictures, right. that you feel about your data. Would you say that ransomware's creators are selective with their victims? Or is Random. Today, there's two ways that we can serve. There's two internets or two webs, let's call them. There's the World Wide Web that we all know. We can you know, go to Google, we can go to Bing, and we can search. There's also another web called the Dark Web. Mm -hmm. The Dark Web's a special browser that you go to. There's no Google for it, and that's where a lot of these um, transactions happen. There's Hitman for Hire. You can buy passports. You can buy credit cards. We've witnessed through some of our vendors and demonstrations of you know, Hacker for Hire. You go out, you create an ID on one of these sites, you have to have something similar to a Bitcoin account. You, it's like picking a menu. It's like, you know, going to fast food. I want one of these, four of these, that type of stuff. You, it's nothing to sign. You go out there, fill out some information, upload a list of potential victims, and these hackers for hire get a percentage of the ransom that they collect. That's how easy it is for somebody to also become, you know, the bad guy. I don't, you don't know where they are in the world. On the dark web, it's, it's pretty, you know, difficult to track that. They're, they could be sitting in the building next door. Yeah. We just wouldn't know. So you have those, you know, uh, starter criminals, let's call it. But we've also seen through whether it be CNN or 60 Minutes that there's uh, a big group of hackers that are out there that tie themselves back to governments. So we're, we're tied back to various governments that are using hacking techniques, ransomware, phishing. Um, we witnessed a, a demonstration with the FBI, how simple it was to go out there to show you that you could just not only download, on, download something, someone then can take over your computer. So I think that we're, we're all kind of victims. And lastly, we kind of look at the two most exploited people, not only for ransomware, but for cyber hacking are the elderly and the young. Um, you know, I will tell you that uh, you know, my family's gotten calls. I think we've all gotten calls. We tell people that, hey, Microsoft doesn't know who you are. Apple's not going to call you. Um, the IRS doesn't call you. Mm -hmm. You know, not only are we getting these electronic mail scams, we're getting these phone calls saying, hey, I know that you're on this internet service. You're spewing out all this information. We need to take over your computer. You know, when they get access to your computer, voluntarily, you think that you're doing right. The bad guys just try every tactic to go out there and, you know, scam us. Yeah. So we have to, you know, buyer beware. You think you're safe on the internet all the time. You just use it blindly and you don't realize that this is happening. Public service announcement, awareness is key. Yeah. I think years ago I went to an, uh, I went to an event and um, I think uh, Buzz Aldrin, you know, Apollo yeah. Pilot was yeah. at this technology event and I, you know, his name didn't associate me with the product that we were looking at. But the campaign for that vendor, and this goes back over 20 years ago, knowledge is power. Yes. And I think that carries through even more today. We have to be knowledgeable to better protect ourselves because you are one click away from disaster. So a quick summary for our small business to sure. as business owners, um, what would you say as a checklist to securing their... So as the business owner, Make sure that your passwords are protected. You know, don't you know have have something that's secure that's not on your Facebook page, that's not your kids' names, your birthday. Because in reality, you know, the keys to the kingdom are typically the password that's out there. Have a good antivirus, and I, we don't endorse any products, but we basically say they're all different colors of of the rainbow that's in place there. Make sure that you have a product in your business. Have a firewall. You know, make sure that you are using some type of internet rules, that it's your Wi-Fi, and the most important, well, two most important things. Number one, make sure that you have a good backup and it's tested. And then lastly, educate your employees. You have to kind of spread the word to let them know what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, but let them carry out what they do in business out to their personal computers. Because what you do find is that a majority of people, if they're using, uh, you know, they, they use their business email as the login into other things, whether it be a, a school site, a religious site, you know, anything like that.
that exposes the business. So password management and education are very important. And if people want to know more about your business, where can they go? Sure, they can go to laninfotech.com and uh, look me up on Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, uh, and uh, interested in security training. We offer no charge security training online. I think it's a real important piece to go out and give back to the community. Well, thank you, Michael. Thank you for your time. This was really interesting. Thank you so much.